Alright, in this video I'm going to be looking at another build of Windows Whistler, which um, eventually became Windows XP. So this one is another Beta 1 build. This is build 2410. And if I remember correctly, there were four Beta 1 builds altogether. So again, at this point, it was still known as Whistler, so Microsoft hadn't decided on what the final name was going to be. That came during Beta 2. And obviously the naming itself was quite a deviation for them at the time. Um, I mean, their last, their last three client releases had all been named after the year in which they were released. So this was a deviation from that formula. Well, there was Windows Millennium Edition as well, but... Don't see why they didn't just call it Windows 2000 Home Edition. In fact, I don't see why they didn't just call Windows 2000 Windows Millennium Edition, because I think Millennium Edition is a really cool name, actually. It's a shame about the operating system. Could have been a bit better. It's got a nice boot screen as well. So again, this one in setup is identifying itself as Whistler Professional. I think I've got this set on 256 megabytes of RAM on just a gigabyte hard disk. Yeah, so the boot screen is the same as the previous Beta 1 build. So you can see they're still using the, the legacy Windows logo at this point. Obviously with XP they changed it and made it look a bit more modern. I do like the old logo though, I miss it. Right, I'm going to recapture the screen so I'll pause the... Right, now, setup's loaded but I've got this dialog box and I'm assuming this has come up because um, with the beta build some of them are well they all have evaluation periods but some of them are actually based on the BIOS clock settings and if you've got them set wrong then it's not going to let you install now I don't think there's a way to change that in VirtualBox yeah so we're outside of the evaluation trial period so it checks the BIOS clock for whether you're within the trial period and we're not obviously because it's about a decade afterwards um, so I'll pause the video and I'll try and find a workaround Right, I ended up just changing the date and time on my own computer, and it's working now. So incidentally, if, if you have a copy of this build and you want to run it, it was released to testers on the 5th of January 2001, so I've just set my date to the 5th of January 2001 and it's working. So again, we've got the 9x style setup. And we've even still got the Windows 95, 98 icons here. So I didn't show these screens in the last video, so I'll let them cycle through once so you can have a look at them. Windows Whistler supports new cutting edge technologies. Starts up faster than ever. I 
not sure why it references new smart menus because they were in Windows Me and 2000 if it's what I think it is Ah, uh, the good old internet connection wizard. Right, so we're at locale settings now. Having problems with the mouse pointer integration. Again, let me try and turn it off. I'll just use the keyboard. Right, so what's the name? As ever. Right, now it's asking me for a product key, so I'm going to pause the video when I type that in. Okay, product key is entered now. So it's asking me for a computer name and a password, which I'm not going to type in. And again, time zone. Pretty standard. And now it's going to finish setup, so I'll pause the video when it does that. Incidentally, um, I've just noticed actually that the setup screen it actually incorporates parts of the professional or watercolor visual theme. If you look at the top right, I can't actually move the mouse there because the integration is so bad. But if you look at the top right, you can actually see a little hint of that visual style there. So it looks like at this point they were just they had no intention of removing it. Obviously, they did before XP. So again, I'll pause the video when setup finishes. Okay, setup's finished now, and we're at the boot screen. It loaded very quickly. It's always a good sign. So this is the welcome screen. Obviously, this stayed in XP, but it was radically different by the time XP was released. And this is the desktop as it stands. Now, as you can see, this is the watercolor theme that I tried to show in the last video, but I couldn't because the color, de color depth was so low. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the resolution up and recapture. So, I'll pause the video. Right, so I've managed to get 102.45768, which is quite nice. So let's have a look at some settings to start. So this is the start menu. So as you can see by by this build it's a lot like it would be in XP. And it's still identifying itself as Windows 2000 in my computer. And the build uh sorry the version number is 5.01. Right, so we've got some performance op performance options as well. Now, I'm not sure when these appeared, but they certainly weren't in Windows 2000. Um, and again, we've got System Restore, which wasn't in 2000. It was in me. Didn't work very well, famously, but... So... So we've got Link to Windows Update. Let's connect to the internet. Obviously, I'm not expecting update to work, but it'd be fun to try it. Personally, I think the watercolor theme is quite nice. Yeah, update's not working. Yeah, so I mean, if you compare the watercolor theme to the Windows 8 Basic theme, really, that's just come out in the consumer preview, they're actually quite similar. They both have this sort of flat interface, and obviously very square, box boxy kind of look to them. 
see what we've got a log on screensaver. Yeah. Now this is interesting. We've got this extra visual style called sample test. Now it's quite ugly, but you can sort of see Luna in there a little bit, can't you? You know, with the sort of they've added some highlights, some curves to it. And you can see that they were getting the idea of Luna. <laughs> and it's that, that, that's a really strange name. Obviously, that must be some kind of joke. So we've got clear type, and that works. Um, I'm actually quite surprised by how well this is supported by VirtualBox with the uh, color depth and resolution. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at Windows Explorer. So as you can see, this is a lot like XP by this point. But again, there are still remnants of 2000 in it, like this incessant need to hide system folders, which was always really annoying in Windows 2000. But at least in 2000 it doesn't do it in every single folder you click on, but it seems to be doing that here. Um, so we've still got the 2000 icons here, but interestingly, if you look at the recycle bin icon, it's a lot like the XP icon, except that it has some handles, which I find quite amusing. So again, this is control panel. So we've got the categorization, but we can switch to classic. Um, let's have a look at start menu options. So again, we've got button grouping. And we still have the option to change to classic. Which is, and that's what that looks like. Now, sounds. I'm assuming that they're still 2000 sounds by this point. Yep, they are. And mouse pointers. Let's have a look. I can't get my mouse up there due to the integration. Um, yeah, so all the mouse pointers that you'd expect are still there as well. And they've actually got a name for this thing, a different name by this point. I can't remember what it was in the last beta build, but it's called Windows Keyring here, and that's a different name. Um, but I mean, otherwise, again, it's just, it's Windows 2000 with a bit of ambition, really. You know, and I think the visual styles, it was a, it's a, a really good idea. If you imagine, if you think back to XP, if you imagine XP still looking like this, you know, there's only so long you can carry on using the same classic interface, and I think changing the vi the visual style in XP really helped with the marketing, because at least it was something new in terms of actual appearance of the operating system and a lot of people say the colors were bright you know they were ugly but I think it was a good idea maybe you know you can debate about whether they they chose the right theme in the end but it was a good idea to get away from classic I think and watercolor is nice and I'd use watercolor but again it is still very classic so I don't know maybe they, that's what they were thinking when they abandoned it Interestingly, we've got some XP icons here, so you can see that they've already started changing some of the icons. Check, check Winver. Yeah, so 5.1, so obviously that is XP's version, so they're identifying it correctly there. Um, and I mean, other than that, it's not too different to the first beta. So I'll show you the shutdown process. So this is the dialog box which is obviously quite similar to how it became an XP 